Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey G297 and welcome to the video. Before we get started with our video using the Toyota Yaris uh, with the Toyota Supra uh, 2JC engine swap, I'm going to first show you guys the unboxing part of the video. Uh, a few days back when I did the Supra BRZ STI with the Corvette engine swap, I did mention that I had a stereo on the way and today it is here. So, here, get these scissors, cut off the tape, or try to attempt to, to do that. Here it is. All right, as you can see, it says it's PS4, PS3, PS, uh, Nintendo Switch, Android steering wheel. So I'll go ahead and open it up and give you guys the full uh, look at it now. Okay, now I got the box uh, basically opened up, have every uh, all the plastic removed and everything, just to show you guys now. Here is the pedals that came with the box. As you can see, there's a USB cord right beside my thumb. So this is like a plug and play. I'm pretty sure this plugs into the steering wheel somewhere. I haven't yet got to see it where exactly where it plugs up. Now I'll show you guys the steering wheel itself. Uh, there's all the buttons that can are on the steering wheel. Of course, it has all the PlayStation uh, buttons on it as well. I, I think it's pronounced do yo. I'm pretty sure that's what the wheel is called. Um, but here it is. Here's the back of it as well. So, and there's the, that little connector piece from the top of the wheel. Um, it does extend out and it actually does uh, sort of twist. I'll show you guys the demonstration real quick. So you can extend out, push it in, you can let it go up, or you can go like that. So that's basically it for the wheel part. So now let's get started with the racing video. Alright, uh, before I show you guys where to get the car, and everything to know. Um, I just saw on Facebook that the network is currently down so I was able to practice with the wheel a little bit. I feel pretty confident with the wheel. It feels really nice, really smooth. I had to, uh, the wheel is not necessarily uh, a wheel itself, it's basically a controller so I had to format the buttons on the controller just a little bit just to match with the wheels so the next Tokyo video uh, I'll be using the wheel for that hopefully. Um, anyway, to find the car, you're going to go to Brand Central. Uh, it'll be right here, right beside the Crown Athlete. Uh, it's 45,600 credits, so it's not too tall and expensive. It's very cheap, uh, pretty easy to afford. Uh, there's all the stats, four-wheel drive tri-train, uh, over 200 horsepower, uh, 200 pounds of torque. Uh, so if you guys are wondering how to get this car, where to find it. Uh, you can get right here at Brand Central pretty easily. Alright, now before I quickly show you guys the engine swap, uh, here's the price of the engine swap, just 210,000 credits, and again it is a Supra. If you guys want to pause the video, uh, just in case if you got, want to check out your garage, uh, just to see if you have the roulette ticket, uh, just to get it for free. Um, but if you do have the roulette ticket, uh, you do not need to do this part. You can just automatically uh, get the engine installed to the car itself. But if you don't not have the ticket, and if you still want to proceed uh, with this guide, uh, then it'll cost you 210,000 credits uh, just to install the Supra. The only thing uh, negative about the Supra with the stats is just the weight. 
Other than that, everything else is, is in the blue. Uh, so that's it for this part. Uh, it's not a wide body, so you just need to do the engine. That's it. Okay, now I'll show you guys where to get the livery that I'll be using. Uh, this is my profile page, uh, just in case if you're wondering uh, to look me up in the game. Uh, this is my gamer GT7 profile uh, profile name. Uh, same thing as my channel, just the YT added behind a 97. That, that's all it is to it. Uh, so I got underneath my news feed, and it'll be this gorgeous uh, Manola Toyota uh, paint job. I just really wish they had this car in the game, that, the Manola Toyota. It was like probably my favorite car in Grand Chief Missile 4. But I just love how it looks. I love uh, that they also add for this livery just a splash of red on it too. It just makes it look really, really good. Uh, so that's the livery that I'll be using. If you guys want to use that livery, you can. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of livery it is. Um, but I just decided just to use a different livery uh, than the one I previously used uh, in the update 1.31 update. Um, so now the next step is I'm going to show you guys the parts that's in the car that I'll be using uh, for the setup. I'll start off with the rims first. Uh, pretty simple. It's going to be these Oz rims right here. Uh, all of it is going to be standard, so there's really nothing to really change on the rims. Just leave it standard as is uh, once you do get the rims. So a pretty simple, easy uh, rim adjustment. Front is standard, uh, the side is standard, and the wing is also standard. So basically everything for the parts is standard. Uh, for racing items, uh, roll cage has to be standard for this to work, and that's pretty much it for the parts uh, for this setup. Now if you guys wanted to know, this is a bug setup. Um, if you did add the roll cage, it'll be way over 600 points. So, of course, here's the new engine swap. Uh, so the tires you have to use would be the support hards. And you can see that the suspension is fully really customized. Uh, all these things you see on the screen is what you basically would need in order for this to work. Uh, even the finest detail, if it doesn't match up, it'll easily boost over 600. Um, Differential has to be fully customized. You can either copy the numbers or have your own setup. Uh, the torque victoring center, same thing. You can, I, I would rather leave it 50-50. That's what I recommend. Uh, the ECU, uh, fully con control computer, has to be 99. The ballast set to a 197. Uh, needs to be positioned negative three. And the power restrictor has to be 98, fully cu customized manual transmission. I forgot to adjust it, so I think the best number here would be about 340. Uh, for the transmission, low RPM is what you'll need for this setup. Anti-lag system, uh, set to strong. Racing intercooler, uh, the exhaust and intake, all of that is all racing. Uh, racing brakes, normal brake pads, and finally racing clutch and flywheel, and everything else you see on the screen is what you'll need. If you have increased body rigidity, you'll have to buy a new body from the upgrade shop and have to redo the process again. So it does not need to have increased body rigidity, but once you have everything copied like I showed you, you should be able to be over underneath 600. Uh, to show you guys how really good this car is, you can see we're just blazing on by, uh, easily passing everybody on the main straight. Uh, this car is really, really quick and really good as we make a little slide uh, all the way to second place and accidentally overcooked it the first turn, smacked the wall, lost the lead. Um, but it's been a while since I've driven this car, so I just kind of forgot how to drive it. So, as you can see, the very, very few laps 
of the race is going to be a little slick uh, because of all the moisture that's on the track. But trust me, once the track gets uh, drier, it will drive a lot better and a lot faster. Um, you can just see how much power we have compared to the RX-7. Um, but this car is really smooth. Um, the only thing you really have to worry about uh, during the run uh, with this car is the front tires. Uh, surprisingly, are the tires to worry about uh, with wear. Uh, the rear tires actually have really good durability. It's just the, just the front tires. Uh, they can be pretty much burned off uh, pretty easily um, within this race. Uh, but as you can see, uh, the car is really strong, um, even though we're kind of hitting the wall and getting loose and stuff. But anyway, fast forward now to our hot lap. Yes, I said hot lap, and we haven't made our pit stop yet. So you can already see how fast the car is in the straightaway itself. We're pushing over 210 miles per hour. Uh, your first braking zone is going to be shortly after you pass your first checkpoint. Um, I do recommend uh, for the first turn, third gear, um, slowly get back to the throttle to get full throttle to this little straightaway, and then brake, turn right, and then have throttle the full throttle again. Uh, Underneath the bridge, you should be in fifth gear. Uh, your car should easily move to the left, be close to that wall, and then do the same thing to the opposite wall. Uh, stay close to the right side of the road for this wall as we downshift to fourth. Uh, you'll stay in fourth gear for the first part of the city district, uh, and you just basically will drive the track as it's time trial. Uh, right below the bridge should be breaking just a little bit, then half throttle to full throttle again. Uh, when you approach the 50 meter sign, stay in fourth gear, brake, and then once you're in the middle of the apex, hit the gas. Uh, after that point, brake when you approach the 100 meter sign on this section of the track. Uh, through these S's, you'll still be in fourth gear, uh, braking some, and then get back to the throttle. Uh, and the last part of the tricky double right hand turn, uh, you should be braking right when you approach the 200 meter sign and you'll be going all the way down to first gear. Um, then slowly get back to throttle. As you saw that, I shifted early to second. And then once you get to the main straight, full power from there, and that's basically a hot lap to Tokyo. So this car really has really strong speed, really strong acceleration. Um, this handling's very decent. It might, be getting, might uh, take you a little bit to get used to it. Uh, but as we cross the line, it's going to be a 204.04. Now, I did realize um, lap 5 was the lap I pit. Um, I should have adjusted my fuel map uh, because I plan on making this a one uh, pit stop strategy. So you just now saw me doing that. I switched to fuel map 5 uh, as soon as we pressed the uh, pit. So if you do the what I call the aggressive strategy. Uh, lap five would be the lap to pit if you start to race in field map one, and I'll be showing you guys the different laps to be in the different field map settings. Uh, so that way uh, you won't really lose too much time uh, just trying to save some fuel. And I'll give you some guys some clips of how I was able to be more efficient on saving fuel. Uh, so you can see right there. We switch to a few map five as we hit the pit road. Uh, this is lap seven. I believe this clip is going to show you guys of the tricks I did in saving fuel. So one thing you do, as you saw right there, I shifted early. Uh, you just barely saw that red bar going just a quarter full on that bar. Um, it's really a pretty neat. Uh, technical way of saving fuel, just shifting the gears early, uh, trying to get as low revs as possible uh, from the engine. Uh, so that's one possible way to save fuel. Uh, it does help out a lot. Uh, plus if you do the more lean uh, fuel map settings. Uh, so that's one very effective way uh, to save fuel. Um, if you plan to do this run, as you just saw right there, I, I just literally just barely switched to fifth gear and just hardly had any of the revs revved up 
uh, to let me know when to change gears. And you see that even that time I didn't even, there was no signs of the limiter uh, showing any color. So that's one way to save fuel if you decide to do this run, uh, unless you choose to be in free map 3 for in the end of the race. Uh, but that's one way to save fuel. Uh, going fast forward now to lap 9, we then move it down to through map 4. Uh, still doing the same te technique, switching when the rev is a quarter full on the rev bar. Um, but once you get to a good rhythm uh, with the car, uh, then you will be able to then move the fuel map settings down just a notch or two, and then you'll be able to really extend the revs uh, more. Uh, lap 10, able to save some more fuel, was able to move it down to fuel map 3. Uh, at this point in the race, I was able to kind of let the revs rev up a little bit more. Uh, build up that limiter or just a little bit um, since we were on the right path of having just enough fuel to save us through the race. So, and at this point the car still felt pretty good. I know the lap times dropped. That was because we were doing this fuel mapping uh, technique. Uh, plus the front tires you can see are also wearing as well. Um, so here we are, last lap. Uh, left front tire is basically cooked. Uh, we did save enough fuel to run fuel map one. Uh, once you do have uh, the left front tire or the front tires in the red, uh, the car will not get loose. Instead, it's going to feel very tight. Uh, really, will not have any grip. Uh, like very understeer feel. Uh, so just keep an eye on that if you do make it to the end with red tires. But other than that, uh, that's basically it. Is it for Toyota, uh, Tokyo, with this Toyota Yaris? Um, it felt really good uh, driving this car again. Um, it was pretty good driving it in 1.31, but uh, for this particular occasion, I was able to go faster than my other run. The other run I did on 1.31 was 208, 26.08. This is a 29.59, so we were able to gain some time in this run. So there's a total time, uh, just literally 26 minutes uh, below, or 25.59. Fastest lap 204.4, uh, that's the lap I was able to show you guys on lap 4, or lap 3. Um, but yeah, the car felt very smooth, it felt very strong, I uh, really enjoyed how it felt. Um, able to get the clearance bonus, uh, kept the car clean, did hit the AI. It didn't go off the track, thankfully. Uh, but that's going to be it for this episode. I'm pretty excited to have the wheel. I was able to do a couple test laps, getting used to the wheel. So hopefully the next episode, whatever car that might be, hopefully I can use the wheel. Uh, hopefully it'll go well. And uh, thank you again, guys, for watching the video. And if you guys are curious to look at my last episode I did, using the underpowered classic 1960, I believe, 8 S200, S800 Honda. There's a video you can click on right there. Very underpowered, but the handling is really strong. So if you guys want to check that video out, you're more than welcome to do so. Again, hopefully this episode is a big help to you. And if you like what you saw today, why not subscribe and you can turn on the bell. Again, see you guys later.